The movie starts in a diner where a single mother, Nina Harrison, is having breakfast with her only son, Dorian. Nina takes out her old camcorder and starts taking videos of Dorian, as it is his first day of college. As Dorian is busy listening to his mother, he accidentally squirts some ketchup on his shirt. Hence, he tells his mom to start recording again. Shockingly, when she presses the rewind button on the camcorder, everything around her goes back in time, as if she has found a glitch in the Matrix. The incident leaves Nina speechless, and she starts breathing heavily. But just as the previous incidents are about to repeat themselves, she quickly stops her son from squirting the ketchup again. She then asks him about the stain on his shirt, but as expected, Dorian doesn't remember it, and simply acts confused. As a result, Nina also assumes that she just experienced deja vu, and the two continue with their day. Next, the two hit the road and proceed towards Dorian's new school. As Dorian is driving, he takes out the camcorder and starts recording. In the heat of the moment, he also also crosses the speed limit. Unfortunately, their fun moment comes to an end when a police car begins pursuing them. Nina asks her son to pull over, and so he does. At first, the officer, Lasky, taunts them for being black, and then inquires if they have any guns with them. Dorian, who is clearly agitated by the racist remarks, tries to speak back, but his mother calms him down. However, the officer keeps provoking them. Just then, he notices the camcorder still in recording mode, and angrily asks Nina to turn it off. Dorian tells him that they have the right to record, but Lasky forcefully tries to grab it. During the tussle, Nina presses the rewind button accidentally, and as soon as she does so, the time rewinds, and the two are taken back to five minutes in the past, where the officer hasn't yet approached them. Even this time, Nina feels terribly tired, as if the time jump has drained her of her energy. Seeing her, Dorian gets worried and pulls over at the same location as before. As he tries to comfort his mother, Officer Lasky approaches them again. Although the Harrisons haven't done anything wrong this time, he he still manages to bring up an excuse to humiliate them. Lasky mentions that a small part of the car is still touching the road, which is a violation of law when someone pulls over. Hearing this, Dorian gets angry, as his mom is in serious need of help. He confronts the officer, saying that they have bigger things to worry about, but Lasky is adamant on punishing them. When Dorian doesn't back off, Lasky brings out his gun and prepares to shoot. Fortunately, Nina, who is still holding the camera, presses the rewind button again and saves them from the situation. This time, she presses the button long enough to take them back to the diner. It turns out that Lasky has been in the same diner with them since the very first scene, and this is where he starts targeting them over and over again because of his racist nature. Realizing that her son's life is in danger, Nina immediately leaves with him and this time she takes the wheel. She also takes the long way, hoping that they will finally evade the racist cop. Expectedly, Dorian is left confused by the sudden change in his mother's behavior, but she assures him that everything is fine. The duo then starts bonding over a song and decides to skip school so that they can spend some time together. Later, they arrive at a motel and plan to eat junk food. On the TV, Nina watches a lottery show and thinks of a plan. At first, she secretly records the numbers being drawn. Then, she comments on how foolish the lottery is, but Dorian feels it's not all completely random. He believes in predestination and the theory that if something should happen, it will happen. Meanwhile, Nina presses the rewind button, but only long enough to go back in time before the lottery numbers are called. She then accurately calls the numbers, leaving her son stunned. She also promises to win the lottery for them. Just when Nina assumes that they have finally averted the danger, a sudden knock on the door stuns her. When Dorian opens the door, her worst fears come true. Officer Lasky has again followed them, and this time he mentions that he got a noise complaint call. Weirdly, he assumes the mom-son duo are a couple and asks them to bring out their identities. And, once again, Dorian becomes angry as they have done nothing wrong. He tries to make the cop leave, but just then, the latter notices the camera quarter in Nina's hands. Lasky then tries barging into the apartment, and a tussle ensues between him and Dorian. As Nina watches in horror, the racist cop smacks her son's head into a nearby glass frame and prepares to shoot. But before he can do so, Nina rewinds the time and takes them back to the diner. This time, she realizes that no matter where she hides, the officer, like some kind of racist Agent Smith, will manage to find them. It seems as if the Matrix has destined the Harrisons to be apprehended by the racist cop. Hence, Nina Nina attempts to try something new and leaves her table to interact with Lasky. Her plan is to win the officer's trust by initiating a conversation. At first, she introduces herself and buys a pie for him, mentioning that she is indebted towards his services for the country. He accepts her kindness, but insists that he does not know her. So, in order to gain his trust further, Nina starts explaining that her son means everything to her and that he is going to college today. Then she asks about his family, and the officer emotionally replies that his wife passed away several years 
earlier and that life has been hard for him ever since. Hearing this, Nina offers her condolences and an appreciative Lasky thanks her for the pie and gets up. But before Nina can leave, he notices her car and inquires if she bought it herself. Nina replies that she worked very hard for it, but Lasky orders her to bring out the car ownership and registration papers. As soon as Nina hears this, she loses her temper and starts shouting that she doesn't need to show any of those papers. Dorian tries calming his mother down, but she doesn't listen. Left with no choice, he enters the car to retrieve his phone as he had clicked a picture of the registration papers earlier. However, as soon as he brings out his phone, the cop mistakes it for something else and shoots him right through the chest without any hesitation. Dorian dies immediately and witnessing this, a devastated Nina drops her camcorder on the floor. In the next scene, Nina is at the hospital where she has been called to identify her son's body. Once all the formalities are done, Nina asks the head doctor about her camcorder, which was with her during the incident. Shortly after, Nina gets her camcorder back, but before she presses the rewind button, she prays to God that it works. Fortunately, it does, and once again, everything rewinds back to the diner scene. Nina is delighted to see her son alive and well, and hugs him immediately. Now, after learning her lesson several times, she decides to leave the diner immediately, before Officer Lasky even arrives. However, while heading out, they come across the officer, but he simply opens the door for them. Later, Nina parks near an abandoned house and finally reveals everything to her son. She mentions that the camcorder has supernatural abilities, with the help of which they can rewind back in time. She also talks about the racist officer and how he keeps following them everywhere they go. She then pleads with Dorian to help her find a way to break the loop. Dorian knows that his mother is not lying, so he starts brainstorming ideas. After a bit of thinking, an idea finally strikes his mind, and he suggests they quickly deviate from the path by going to his uncle's house. After a while, they reach a neighborhood, which appears to be the place Nina was raised in. There, she tells Dorian how her older brothers were shot dead by police officers and how the incident has left her traumatized ever since. Soon, they are greeted by her older brother, Neil, who still lives there, but the two appear to be cold towards one another. It turns out that he is still upset that she didn't come to their father's funeral. However, on seeing his sister in bad condition, Neil takes the mom-son duo inside. There, Nina explains everything to her estranged brother and asks for his help to stop Officer Lasky. She tries her best to make him understand that she is not lying and surprisingly, Neil, being a loyal brother and a strong supporter of movements like Black Lives Matter, instantly believes her. It is then revealed that the camcorder previously belonged to their father before he passed it to Nina. Moreover, Neil reveals that their father always told stories of magic like this. Perhaps even he used the camcorder several times to save them from messy situations. With this knowledge, the brother-sister duo finally reconciles and hugs one another. That night, the three gather around and start making elaborate plans to stop the inevitable. Neil proposes that they take Dorian to college, as it is the only place other people can help them. It turns out that Dorian is admitted to an all-black college, so if Lasky tries harassing them there, the others will revolt. But first, they have to get to the college, which is very risky by road. Hence, Neil plans out a shortcut route for Dorian to make it to the school unnoticed. He uses personal blueprints of the town he has designed over the years. In the next scene, Neil leads them inside an underground tunnel, which he claims was used several decades ago as a mining base. Along the way, Nina and Neil reminisce about their childhood days and also about their late father. Shortly after, they climb outside of the tunnel, which leads them right to the college. Dorian is elated to see so many students there and can't wait to interact with them. However, as the three continue proceeding towards the entrance, the villain, Officer Officer Lasky appears out of nowhere. He orders them to stop and inquires about what they were doing inside the tunnel. Scared, Nina tries taking her son away, but the officer takes out his gun and points it at them. Seeing this, Neil puts himself in harm's way and dares the officer to shoot. At the same time, some other police officers arrive at the scene with their guns. Fed up with the injustice and discrimination she has faced from Lasky, Nina steps forward with her camcorder and starts recording the cops. Dorian tells her to press the rewind button and restart everything, but this time, she refuses. Instead, she locks the camcorder, and now, there is no going back. Seeing her courage, the other students in the college also bring out their cell phones and start recording the incident. At first, Lasky laughs at the idea of being intimidated by a camcorder. However, with everyone's attention on her, Nina starts speaking. She berates Lasky for abusing his authority and harassing others just because of their skin color. She also calls him 
him out for being a corrupt officer who only cares about himself and not the welfare of other people. Realizing that they are fighting a losing battle, the other cops back off and proceed towards their cars. But Lasky is still adamant on teaching Nina a lesson. He prepares to fire his gun and settle the matter once and for all. But when he glances around and sees all the students with their cameras out, he becomes scared and lowers his gun. As he walks away, Nina taunts him for being a loser. In this way, the Harrisons, with the help of Neil and a bunch of students, finally end the loop they were trapped in. Cut to several years later, Dorian has now become a father and has managed to do well with his life. As he plays with his daughter, Nina records them joyfully with the same recorder. Just then, the little girl takes the camcorder and accidentally drops it to the ground, breaking it into pieces. Witnessing this, a devastated Nina quickly rushes to the pieces, as the device had always been with her through thick and thin. She had become so used to it that it had started affecting her normal life. As she weeps in despair, Dorian helps her up and urges her to move on. He tells her that now they can make real memories without having to depend on a device. The movie ends as Nina starts a new journey in her life, one without the camcorder that had saved her several times in the past. However, when the scene fades black, police sirens are heard, indicating that she has to deal with the officer once again, but this time with no rewind option. The moral of the story is that you can't cure racism with pie. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.